If a Muslim living in Sudan decided to abandon his or her faith or convert to another religion, for example, like Christianity, this person would be stoned. You know, for nearly 30 years, Sudan's apostasy law, based on strict Islamic Sharia law, condemned to death anyone found guilty of violating the law. But now, in a dramatic reversal, the overwhelming Muslim nation in Africa has decided to scrap the death penalty and introduce a host of political reforms that experts hope will improve the lives of the Sudanese people, especially women and minority faith groups. The U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom has welcomed steps taken by Sudan's interim government, calling the legislative reforms, quote, significant and historic. USCIRF's uh, Vice Chair Anurima Barg Bargava joins me now for more. It's great to have you on the broadcast. Uh, you know, Sudan was one of 12 countries in the world punishing apostasy by death, not anymore. How significant is this? It's uh, extraordinarily significant because I think in so many ways what we've seen in Sudan, which was after 30 years of rule by an Islamist regime uh, in protests that brought down that government, uh, we are now seeing uh, massive reforms across the country, including uh, this most recent move to, to make sure that apostasy uh, is no longer something that would be punishable by death. Um, and I think for the Commission and for many around the world, Sudan is a place that we can now look to uh, to see how it is that we can move from extraordinarily uh, restrictive uh, regimes, particularly for women, that uh, to a place where there is much more belonging for people of all religious faiths and where religious freedom can thrive. Uh, I remember covering the conflict in Sudan, whether we, it was with Darfur or between the North and the South for many, many years, and to see um, an overwhelmingly Muslim nation to, to, to make, take such a step uh, 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 in terms of reform and reforming uh, aspects of, the, of its uh, Islamic penal court is quite significant. Uh, I'm curious, the amendment, I'm sure, is good news for Sudan's non-Muslim community, right? It's good news for the non-Muslim community, actually, since uh, a joint civilian military government came into place in August of last year. We've seen a number of reforms. We've seen everything from Christmas being declared a national holiday. We've seen the disbanding of church councils that had been used to intimidate uh, churches and their practices. Uh, we've seen, uh, you know, a, a Coptic uh, woman who was actually part of uh, the, the one of the most senior councils in Sudan. And um, we've seen this most recent uh, round of, of reforms, uh, which include um, the banning of female genital, genital mutilation, uh, include um, efforts to try and make sure that uh, laws that, uh, that said that Muslims could not drink alcohol. Um, those, are, those are all th things that have actually benefited not only uh, the Christian communities that have been long been persecuted in, in Sudan, but Muslim communities as well, um, and the guardianship law. And that was a law that required women um, to get a permit um, from a male guardian to be able to travel abroad. Um, those are all part of this most recent round of reforms that includes uh, the changes to the apostasy law. Yeah, quite significant, especially on the, uh, on the matter of FGM, this horrific practice of female genital uh, mutilation, which happens sadly all over the world. I'm curious, what does this mean for the rights of women and girls in Sudan? I think what we've seen in Sudan is uh, the protest movements that were very much led by women, uh, that women were standing with extraordinary courage uh, to try and move their country forward. And I hope that the, the changes in the laws um, are, are implemented across the country and that Sudan is able to put the kind of resources uh, behind uh, that kind of implementation so that we don't see the, the persecution of women and girls that we have seen for so long in Sudan and other countries that have similar laws. And so I think it's a, a dawn of a new day. Uh, we at the commission uh, were really uh, blessed to be able to meet with the prime minister and a number of his uh, council of ministers, including uh, many women. Uh, and we were able to travel to Sudan earlier this year in February. And um, in that meeting, uh, we had a chance to meet with a number of women leaders who are extraordinarily inspiring uh, in not only what they were able to, to do to move their country forward, but in the ways in which they continue to pressure this government 
and their country uh, to change and to open up pathways for women to be able to uh, stand in the power uh, and and with the kind of, of talent and, and extraordinary um, work ethic and dedication that they bring to this country. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. A new dawn uh, in the nation of Sudan. Thank you so much for coming on the broadcast.